In this example, we're going to look again at a one-dimensional line charge, but now taken into the shape of a full circle, and the perspective is a little bit different, so let's make sure our eyes are adjusting properly to the perspective that's here. What we are being given to consider is the, let me do it in red, is the positive y-axis is here, positive z-axis is here. So the ring of charge is actually sitting in the yz plane. And we are being asked to calculate the electric field at a point on the perpendicular bisector through the central axis. So the positive x-axis is here. And we can see that our electric field will be only in the positive x-axis, but we'll get to that in a moment. So we put our positive test charge down on the x-axis because that's what the problem would be telling you to do if there was, there was more words to the question. You would be told to find the electric field as a function of x on that perpendicular bisector. So again, you'll notice similarities to what we did in our last example. We put a dq in, and we look at the electric field dE from that dq. We put a symmetric dq in if we can, and we can in this case, and get this dE. We then get the two dExs in the positive x direction. The two deys cancel out, so we have only DE in the X direction by symmetry. So we are going to get all that into our solution. One, two, three, four steps, same as before. And the equation that is going to give us the integral for the total electric field in the X direction is DE cosine theta. So K dQ on R, remember it's the calculus version of Coulomb's law for dE, and we have the cosine theta again, where the angle theta here, right, is the angle here. And notice theta doesn't change now in this problem. So as we go from dQ to dQ to dQ to dQ, that angle theta does not change. So that angle theta here, remains constant in this problem. So let's see where we go. Well, since theta is constant, uh, it's going to come out of the integral that we're, we're going to see. We, we replace the dq, so just like we did before, we'll always be substituting in for dq. So we get rid of the dq and we get, we use our lambda ds and in this case, we can leave it as ds. We could put in rd theta if, if we wanted. This little r also remains constant. We'll deal with that in a moment. So the little r remains constant. It's going to come out of the integral, as we can see here as well. So we're only left, in this case, with the line integral ds, and we're going all the way around the circle from 0 to 2 pi r. And again, if you have all of these steps and the only thing left to do is to take this integral to your mathematician colleague and have them solve it for you, then you will get full credit for our physics class. Now, the integral of ds is s, so this is going to be an easy integral to solve. So let's see what we get for our solution. Well, what we get, as we said before, the left-hand side is always easy. That's always going to be the integral of dE, so that will be our e as a function of x. Uh, basically, everything came out of the integral. The k is constant, lambda is constant, theta remains constant, and r squared remains constant in this problem. So the integral of ds is s, and we integrate from 0 to 2 pi r. We get our 2 pi r here, so our integral ds gives us that red 2 pi r. Now, we want e as a function of x, so the only thing we have to be a little careful with in this problem is that the r in this r squared is actually, by Pythagorean theorem, quantity x squared plus r squared square root, and we can see that here. So 
this little r is related to the x and the capital R by the Pythagorean, so we get our final answer. So you will see that you'll get used to doing these types of problems and showing these steps, and there will not be any, any problems, I do not believe, with your comfort level um, in showing what you need to show to get full credit for the AP test on these problems.